All right, welcome back, future EMTs. Today we're going to look at our backboarding skill. For our backboarding skill, first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a partner to maintain our neutral inline position of our patient. So, Cindy, can you go ahead and maintain neutral inline position? After that, we're going to check our CMS of our patient. Our C stands for our circulation. So, so Holly, I'm going to check your pulses here. I'm going to check her radial pulses. I'm going to check them at the same time so I can compare them. I can feel that they're equal, bilateral. Then I'm going to have, so Holly, can you go ahead and squeeze my fingers? I'm checking her efferent motor pathways, and I can check that her grip strength is equal. Thank you. Now I'm going to check her, check her afferent sensory pathways by squeezing a, a finger. So Holly, can you tell me which finger I'm touching? My thumb. And how about now? I want to do these not at the same time so that I can tell that the pathway is good on her left side and again on her right side. After I've got the arms, I'm going to come down to her feet. I'm going to compare those pedal pulses. I have equal bilateral pedal pulses. So Holly, can you pull up on your feet? All right. I've got equal strength on her feet, so I'm checking her efferent motor pathways, and then for her afferent sensory, I like to squeeze a toe. So Holly, can you tell me which toe I'm touching? My big toe. And which toe am I touching? My little toe. If you're going to squeeze a toe, try to make sure you do the big toe or little toe, because nobody knows the toes in the middle. I could also do the top of her foot, the bottom of the foot, left foot, right foot, all those are okay. All right. Now I'm going to select my C collar for my patient. Remember from our C collar video, we're going to measure from the chin straight back, drop our fingers down to the top of the tra uh, traps, measure our C collar. All right, Cindy. I'm going to slide this behind my patient. Okay, once I get that behind my patient's neck, I'll pull the collar down. And secure my collar. I want to make sure that it's tight enough on my patient. And because I'm in the classroom, I get to stand back and see that her head isn't hyperextended. And I want to make sure that it's in line with my patient's chin and her sternum. Okay, now we're going to log roll our patient up. I've got Shailen to help me out. If my patient's cooperative, I can have my patient go ahead and give himself a hug. And so Holly, can you cross your right foot over your left? These are just style pieces if you have a cooperative patient. I'm going to grab that bony structure of the shoulder, and I'm going to grab below the hip. And Shannon, can you grab above the hip, the hip, crossing our hands, and below the knee? All right, we're going to roll up on Cindy's count. Anyone not ready? One, two, three. I'm going to roll up. Move my backboard close, and now is my time to my to do my detailed physical exam of the back, all the way down to the coccyx, the side of the back, the back of the butt, and the legs. Okay, and now on Cindy, on your count, we'll place her down on the backboard. Anyone not ready? One, two, three. Okay, Shannon, can you come around so we can center her on the backboard? We're pretty high up, so we're gonna move her down and then we'll move her back up. We need to go to our patient's right about three inches. We're gonna move her down about six inches. Anyone not ready? One, two, three. Okay, and now we're in line and we'll move straight up about six inches. Anyone not ready? One, two, three. Stop. Okay. Actually, we need to come up a little more. I think we're good right okay. there. Okay. All right. Now that we 
we have our patient centered on our backboard, we're gonna look at strap. We have a couple different options with strapping. We have our buckle straps, and we also have our spider straps. We'll do another video to show you our spider straps, and for now we'll show you our buckle straps. The buckle strap has a loop on one end and a buckle on the other. To attach the buckle strap, we're gonna place one end around the handle of the backboard, around the location of the hip. Through the loop on the backboard, we'll take the buckle, slide it through, and that creates our girth hitch. That's gonna go at a diagonal across our patient's chest. Our next side of the buckle will go above their shoulder, another girth hitch. Tighten that down and buckle that in across our patient's chest. We don't want to pull that too tight that restrict uh, breathing of our patient, but tight enough to secure our patient. Now when I put the other diagonal side, I want to put my, I have a short buckle and a long buckle side of my buckles. I want to alternate those. So my short buckle was on the lower side. So this time I'm gonna put my short buckle on the top side so that my buckles don't uh, lay on top of each other and create a pressure point for my patient. Before I tighten that down, I'm gonna feel underneath the small of my patient's back, right in here, and see if there's any space where I can put some pad. I'm gonna pad those voids. I don't wanna lift up too high on my patient, just enough for a little bit of comfort. When I pull the strap to tighten it down, I'll use one hand to push the strap towards the buckle and one hand to pull down. So Holly, does that feel like it restricts your breathing? No. Now I'm gonna move down to my patient's hips to finish securing her torso. I'm gonna make sure that my strap is over the bony structure of my patient. I don't want it over the soft structures, not over her belly, but I can feel that I have the bony structure of the hip. Now that I have my patient's chest and hips secure, I have the torso secure. Here you as an EMT get to decide if you want to secure the head or finish with the legs. Because I have Cindy holding the head, securing the head, I like to go ahead and finish my legs. As long as you do the torso first, you'll be okay. So I'm gonna move down to my patient's legs. I'm gonna put some padding underneath of her knees Then I'm gonna secure over her thighs. Once I have it secure over her thighs, I will secure below her knees. Try 
trying to think about how long your patient is going to be on the backboard. And the more padding you can uh, give them, the better they're going to be. If you have a smaller patient where your straps uh, are too loose, you can wrap your, your strap a couple times around each handle to take up that extra space. Now that I have my patient secured to the backboard, I'm gonna go ahead and secure the patient's head. We have two different options here we'll show you. One is our disposable straps, or our disposable headbeds. This is what most departments are going to. And then we have the reusable headbeds, which places like uh, lifeguards, pools, ski patrol have. Uh, they are both designed to secure the head. I'm gonna show you the disposable headbed. We've got uh, a, like a pillow for the patient's head with a sticker on the bottom and a piece of plastic that pulls to take off that sticker. So Sahala, or Cindy, can you go ahead and slightly lift the patient's head? Now I'm gonna pull that plastic piece and it will secure my pad to the backboard. And then I've got my head blocks. They have Velcro on two sides and then no Velcro on one side. That no Velcro is what's gonna go against my patient's head. We want this above our patient's ears, right around their temple. So Cindy, I'm gonna bring this in and place this here. Can you put your hand on that side of it and your hand on that side of it? And we have our forehead strap. It's gonna go across our patient's forehead onto the head blocks and secure them. And then we have tape. The tape is going to go around the handle of the backboard, across the C collar, making sure that I don't get on my patient's skin, and around the other handle of my backboard. Now that my patient's torso and head are secure, Cindy can let go of stabilization of the head. Now I'm going to recheck my CMS. I'm going to check those pulses together so I can compare them. I have equal bilateral pulses. Tali, can you squeeze my hands? I have equal grip strength. And can you tell me which finger I'm touching? Okay. And how about now? Right. I'm going to check the feet. My pedal pulses, I'll compare them. I have equal bilateral pedal pulses. Can you push down against my hands? I have equal strength. And then, can you tell me which toe I'm touching? My big toe. And can you tell me which toe I'm touching? My middle toe. If my patient is cooperative, I can give them something to hold. Can you go ahead and hold that for me to keep their hands in? If my patient is unresponsive, I can use something to tie their hands together so that stay, their hands stay up and don't slide down. We'll transport our patient. 